Hey guys, thanks for joining me. This is Angie at Chicken Scratch and today I'm sharing with you how to make a quilted fabric basket using six fat quarters. This basket is different than the one I've shown you before. You can make six of these quilted fabric baskets using the measurements I'm giving you today. A fat quarter measures 22 inches by 18 inches and you can get 14 strips out of one. You could also use a jelly roll if you prefer. So here's what we'll need. Six fat quarters or a jelly roll, lining fabric that measures 11 inches by 12 inches and you need two of those, two pieces, fusible fleece that measures 12 inches by 21 and a quarter inches and I use the pellon. Okay, you also need your basic sewing supplies that include sewing machine, thread, iron, creative grid ruler, erasable marker, tiny sewing clips, pen, scissors, and a label if you prefer. I get mine from the Dutch label shop. Okay, so let's get started. Step one is going to be you're going to press your fat quarters. Step two, you're going to cut your fat quarters to measure two and a half by 11 inches, and you can use our diagram to cut your fabric. Step three, cut the lining fabric. Step four, cut the fusible fleece, and now we're ready to make the quilted fabric basket. Okay, here's the basket that we're making. A quilted fabric basket it's a little bit larger than the ones we've made before and this time we've quilted it uh, you can use pattern fabric on the inside this time I just chose to use white fabric I really didn't have enough of this to use for the lining so um, yeah so you can use whatever you want but I'm using white so here's the fabric that we're using. We're using two strips of each pattern and they measure two and a half by 11. So you can use a jelly roll if you want. I did not this time. Um, okay, so two and a half by 11, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 12 strips. Then you're gonna use two pieces of white fabric for your lining and this measures 11 by 12. So this is the lining and I've already pinned them. I'll explain that process later. And then one piece of the fusible fleece, I use the Pelin 987, and this measures 21 and a quarter by 12, okay? So what we're gonna do is take these strips over to our sewing machine, and I'm going to place this one right sides together, and then we're gonna sew, let me go ahead and just pin this, um, that way we can go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna put one pin at the bottom and I wanna make sure that I place the pins so that I can still use my sewing machine and not run over the pin, okay? So I'm just bringing it in slightly. So now we're gonna stitch all the way down and then we're gonna open it up <laughs> and then we're gonna add this strip and then this one and this one and this one and so on. So you're gonna end up with two pieces of the front and the back so the front and the back of the basket. So I'll see you over at the sewing machine. Okay, so before we start sewing, I wanted to share with you that for my seam allowance, I'm using the edge of my foot number one. So I'm on a Bernina and this is foot one. So I'm gonna be lining up the edge of my fabric with the edge of this foot, okay? So these bags are pretty forgiving. You can use whatever seam you want as long as you're consistent throughout the bag. So I'm using this foot for the entire bag, okay? Okay, so we've just sewn all these strips together. So this is our front, or it can be the back because they're both gonna be the same. And so now I need to go over and sew the next set of six. But let's go ahead and do the next step uh, here on camera. So I'm gonna get my little uh, pressing mat. And you have two choices for these. You can either press your seams open on all of these, or you can just press them to the sides. Let me turn my steam on here. Okay. 
And I'm gonna do these two. Now I'm gonna flip it over, just make sure it looks good. And it does, just give it a little press here on the front. Okay, so this one's done. I'm gonna go do the other one off camera and I'll be back. Okay, so we've got our two pieces ready and we're going to place these right sides together. And then down here at the bottom, we're going to pin or clip them. And then we're gonna go sew the bottom, okay? So here's how it looks. Now, I'm gonna set that aside. And our lining fabric, like I said, it measures 11 by 12. We have two pieces. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew from here to here, and then from here to here. This is gonna leave our opening in the bottom so that we can flip our basket out. So in my old basket, the seam was at the top. This one's gonna be, the seam's gonna be at the bottom. So make it makes it a little bit easier to make it. So now we're going over to the sewing machine to do this and to do this one, okay? Let's get our front fabric back. We're ready to add our fusible fleece. This measures 21 and a quarter by 12. I'm gonna lie it flat with this, with the um, tacky side up, and then I'm going to place my fabric, my front fabric on top. This is a little bit different from my first fabric basket video. We added the fusible fleece to the liner in that basket. Now you don't wanna get this stuff on your sewing machine, I mean not your sewing machine, but your iron. So if you have any fusible fleece that's peeking out from the corner, trim it off, okay? You don't wanna ruin your iron. Also turn off the steam. When you're using the fusible fleece, it's much better to not use steam, okay? So I'm just gonna press this and I'll probably fast forward it because you do really want to press it good. Now we're ready to add our label. So if you wanna add a label, I get these from the Dutch label shop online. What I'm gonna do is just fold it in half like that, okay, in half. And then this is gonna be the bottom of my basket, but remember, we're gonna be cutting a one and a, one and a half inch out of the bottom to have a three inch bottom. So I wanna make sure I come up far enough that I don't cut into my tag. And then I wanna bring it in so that when I'm sewing it, it catches the end of that or catches it in the seam. So I've got my pen and that's how it looks, okay? And, bef and when I go to sew it, I'll confirm that it did catch uh, the label. So now we're ready to take this over to the sewing machine to do our quilting, okay? So we're gonna start, we're gonna use this seam as our guide on my foot, and I'll show you when we get over there. So we're gonna sew to the left and to the right of each of these seams, okay? Okay, so I'm at the sewing machine. We're about to stitch to the right of this seam and to the left. And I'm actually gonna use my foot. I found it's just easier for me to use the foot. Again, I'm on a Bernina foot number one. And I'm gonna use these inside marks to line it up, okay? So I'm gonna place this seam on that right there. And then that's gonna stitch, what, about an eighth of an inch over from the seam. So I'm lining it up to the inside of this little silver piece. Thank you. 
Okay, so I've done enough for you to see how to do it. I'm actually going to stop the camera now, and then I'll pick back up on the next step, okay? Okay, so you can see that I have sewn to the left and to the right of every one of these seams. On, you can see on both sides. Okay, so now what we're ready to do is, don't forget, we've got our label here. So we're going to fold this in half and then we are going to clip it. So I like to clip two on the top like that. And then I'm gonna clip on the right side at the bottom. And then over here where the label is, I'm gonna clip there. So that way I'll know when I get to my sewing machine that I wanna pay special attention to this side to make sure I catch my label, okay? So that's how it looks. Now we're gonna go do the same thing to our lining fabric, okay? Okay, so now we're gonna do the lining fabric. Okay, so now we're ready to confirm that we sewed our label into the seam, and I did. Sometimes I do miss it. Okay, so now, this is our lining fabric. We're gonna set that aside. This is our front fabric. Now what we're gonna do is take a ruler and a marking pen, and we are going to mark one and a half inches to cut out a three inch bottom. If you want a four inch bottom, cut out two inches. If you want um, a two inch bottom, then cut out one inch. So this is three inches because I cut out a one and a half inch corner. Make sure when you're doing this, and I didn't share this on my first fabric basket video, is make sure you're measuring from this seam and the bottom if you start over here on the side, you're gonna be a little bit off. And I really, I did that uh, not knowing <laughs> on my first video. So my one and a half is here, and then one and a half is here. So I'm gonna line this to this seam here. So that's at the one and a half, and then make sure the bottom down here is at one and a half. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here, which means you're gonna to need to turn your ruler because you're gonna to wanna to mark on this side, okay? So it gets a little bit challenging, a little bit confusing, but I've got the one and a half inch marking here on this seam and then at the bottom right there, okay? You can also just cut a piece of paper out and use it if the uh, ruler uh, confuses you. So now we're gonna take our scissors and cut those out. Preferably nice, sharp fabric scissors. I say that because these are not my sharpest. They've, they've gotten kind of dull. I need to get them sharpened. This is trash. So now what we're gonna do, match these seams up here, see, like that, and then match this up, and then we're going to, you can either pin it or clip it. For this part, I'm gonna just go ahead and use my pins, and now do the same thing on this side. So line it up, line it up, and now we're ready to take this over to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch straight across on this one and on this one, okay? Now let's do the same thing for the lining. So this is the bottom of my lining and I'm going to mark it with the one and a half inch. So one and a half over here, one and a half over here. Whoops. And now this side, so one and a half. And I'm lining it up with the seam. 
So it looks like it's larger than one and a half, but that's because of the seam, okay? So remove this square. These scissors are normally really nice. Uh, I've just been using this one with my paper crafting for a long time and it just needs to be sharpened. I actually have three pair. So same thing, we're gonna open this up just like that. And then I'm gonna fold one side to the right, one side to the left. And now this side, and I just realized that I don't have another pen over here. I'll just use a clip. One to the left and one to the right. I'll pin it when we get over there to sew it. So now we're going to the sewing machine. Okay, so we're gonna start with this one. And I'm using the same thing. I'm using the um, edge of my foot as my guide. Okay, so we've just sewn the bottoms. They're all done. You want, might wanna check them for holes. So now what we're gonna do is open up our basket, just like that, and we're gonna take our lining fabric and turn it right side out, okay? So we're gonna put the pretty side out. That would be the right side, right side out. And at this point, you might wanna go ahead and trim all those extra threads. Um, yeah, trim those. So now what you're gonna do is place this inside your basket. This is gonna be right sides together. And you wanna match up your seam. So here's seam number one. I'm gonna take this one, let's see. This goes to the right and this one goes to the left and I am going to pin it. You can also use your clips. So there's that one, okay? And then I'm gonna come over here to this side, and this time this outer one goes to the left, and the inside one goes to the right, and then I'm gonna pin it, okay? So now, if I did everything right, all of these are gonna line up. So I'm just gonna slide over to the right, and continue pinning. Sometimes if you make the lining too big, it will pucker just a slight bit. And I'm out of pins, so I'll use my clips. So now we're gonna go sew along the whole top edge. So for this part of the video, I need to take this off. So if you have um, a machine that has this, you'll have to remove that, okay? So this is a little bit tricky because I am placing the basket kind of where the stand is to record this. So I'm trying to not bump the camera. So same thing, I'm using the edge of my foot for my... And I want to make sure that I didn't mess up the lining, uh, placing it on my machine. So we just stitched around the entire top of the bag. And now what we're going to do is get the lining and we're going to turn our baskets right side out. such a cute basket, isn't it? It's all about the fabric. Okay, so now, this is how it looks. At this point, you could go ahead and press this. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'll press it afterwards. 
So we're going to close this lining. So all I'm gonna do is just bring it together and pin it and then go sew it real quick. Whoops. I always say this is the hardest part. I'm lining this up on the inside of my foot. Okay, so we just closed up the bottom. Trim your extra threads. Now we're ready to place that inside our basket. So we only have two more steps. We're gonna sew around the top and then we're gonna press it. So I'm gonna start over here on this side here. So that's the clip. Sometimes, uh, depending on what you're making, the clips can get in your way. With the pins, uh, I like the clips better, but with the pins, you don't have to take them out. You can just keep sewing without stopping. Sometimes if you stop a lot, um, you start going crooked. You get crooked, crooked lines. I get crooked lines anyway. I don't have the best of vision, but the baskets are still super cute, right? Okay, so we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and stitch around the entire bag. Again, I'm lining this up to the edge of my foot. Okay, so let's take all these pins out. There we go. And poke out our corners. I probably should have done that earlier, but not that big of a deal. Got some loose threads to trim. Okay, look, it's done. It's cute, I didn't mess up. Let's press it real quick so you can see that. So this is what I use to press the baskets. I do not have steam on, so once you use your fusible fleece, just remember to turn off the steam option, okay? So this is the one that we just made today, and this is the one that I made earlier. Okay, this wraps up our quilted fabric basket. Please subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, thanks so much. Have a great day.